What's happening, tubers? There is very little time and so many toys. I have a choice, the Landrum inverter. Uh, the new PIP inverter just arrived. The 4024 out at the farm. That'll be thrown up on the wall, hopefully this weekend. And the Grow Watt, or I could build some more packs. Decisions. I think I'm gonna run with this, but first I'm gonna have to clean this up. Now that'll turn on, I believe, at 100 volts uh, for the charging. So I'll grab the Tesla batteries, jerry-rig something up and make this work. Hit the time-lapse button, let's get this place cleaned up. Okay, so that wasn't as much cleaning up as moving stuff off camera. Let's continue. Resolver's turned off. Let's just check the voltages. Uh, positive is on this side. So we got 2.9 volts. Don't know if you can see that. And for the solar, we have 111 volts. So that's higher than 100 and under 120. So I can play with that. That's no worries. Now I'm going to take off the solar from outside on the shed roof and put it into this circuit breaker here. Um, so then I can just hook up some MC4 connectors, run it down to the inverter and see how that goes. Cable's changed over. I have to check the polarity down at the inverter, but we turn that off. We've got nothing. I'll turn it back on again. So 111.7 volts. Now I'm only going to be testing the off-grid function of this today, so I don't need any of the AC. And given I'm not qualified for it, I'm just going to take that off. Because I don't have a cover for it. Slide some red and black heat shrink over that. I don't think the inverter likes the hot air gun. She's beeping a bit and she shut down. <laughs> no idea. She overloaded, but got the job done for now. Also now, now the Ryobi won't run on that little inverter with all the lights on. It didn't get the job done. Oh right, yeah, back on 240 volt again. Nope, I turned it off the wall. <laughs> Alrighty, and now we've got cooking with gas. Excellent, dropped all screws. Almost a requirement. Anyway, a bit of encouragement. Hopefully we didn't make that heat shrink too long. The Tesla batteries made a new ap another appearance. We got the Watchmon, so we can actually monitor the batteries and stuff like that. Not going to have the shunt connected up, but we'll still be able to have a look via an amp meter or three. And the amps going in and out. Almost had a heart attack. With the bolts in, I was getting zero voltage out of those terminals, but once I move it around 23.67. We go 23.66, so nice and balanced still. So, and with the two batteries hooked up, we've got 27.3 volts. I just need a breaker in between those two. We're now about an hour later, um, having to build some cables and find all the necessary gear to actually put all this together. 
Uh, now the end setup is we've got the two Tesla modules, the 24 volt 6S batteries. We've got a disconnect. Uh, we've got a little amp meter there because we're running the bait room without the shunt. Um, we've got the bait room running there so we can see a little bit of information about the battery. It hasn't been used for about two or three months. And it's still 0.01 of a volt within balance. So pretty happy with that if I should be honest. Now I've got this to turn on and stuff but it's it's not right. Uh, what I believe I need is this USB dongle here. I've I've posted a lot on social media and stuff and tried on many different groups and stuff like that and hours of googling trying to find where I can buy a land run USB wireless dongle and I just can't find one. I found that must uh, inverters actually rebranded this product and sold it under their own either brand name or knocked it off I'm not sure which one it is um, and I, I just can't work it out so I've got a whole heap of these just generic ones I've got a D-Link on there now D-Link one if you put it in just ever so right you're never gonna see that on camera but it does sometimes flicker when you plug that one in and then, then we've got a WG, this one's a bit bent, but I know it works. And the computer, 111 version 2. We plug that one in. Let's see if we can do this one-handed. We can't. You just have to look at my belly button. Oh yeah, it turns out I couldn't do that one-handed. There's no light. Now that does work perfectly fine on the computer, even though that is a little bit cockeyed. But this one here, a wireless N adapter, and there's a version two as well, I think. That's a version two. You plug that one in and you get a light. Now I have got a handful more, but these ones were the most likely to work. I'm gonna buy a couple more tomorrow. Um, and then I can go through the actual software on my phone and it won't see this device. So I think it's actually a proprietary uh, USB that actually creates a hotspot and stuff within it as well, not just a dongle that goes to another router. So I don't think that's going to work. I'm gonna to have to continue the hunt for that Wi-Fi adapter. Now, why is that Wi-Fi adapter so important? Well, there doesn't appear to be anywhere I can plug in. We've got um, channel four. I can hardly read that from back here. See if I can see it on the screen. You might be able to see that, but I certainly can't. But we've got those there, and I think we've got RS484 port, RS454 port. And then we're gonna have a shunt, and then we'll also have a battery temperature down there. Now, some of those might be causing it not to work as well. Now, we do have 240 volt output. It's probably gonna flicker on camera. It is, that's not flickering. So we've got 240 volt out there. And then when the battery, we can see we've got PV going in, so we've got 100 and 10 volts or something going in so that's on and it's going that way but the battery is hasn't got the little arrow down the bottom so it's going the wrong direction so we're pulling 18 or well, 0.18 of an amp from the battery to run the inverter at the moment or something parasitic load or whatever you want to call it and I can't get it to actually charge the battery um, it's possible that I need to put that CT clamp on there which I don't actually own yet uh, it's possible that I need to actually configure it with this, which is I think is the most likely cause But not sure. It's actually green there. So that's that's saying it's um In normal operation mode. I think it just needs to be configured Anyway tubers if anybody can help out with settings or Spare parts spare parts wise. I need a cover for here. There's like a, a gland cover for there I need the USB and I need the cover over the AC as well, if anybody's got that. I would be willing to pay for that wherever you are in the world. That USB is the most important. I really would appreciate somebody to hook me up on that. So tubers, thank you very much for tuning in. Stay tuned for next week's episode when I try and get all the little peripherals working if I get some spare time. And um, see if I can actually get some energy going into the battery. Into the battery is the first thing. And then out of it again, well, I have to wait till next Wednesday when the sparky gets here. So, tubers, thank you very much for tuning in. Cheers, and I'll see you on the next one.